Hey folks, this is Cole and um, this is another episode, number four, of Feminine Principle. Last time we addressed feelings that are a little bit more intense and how to heal them. I'll just quickly repeat that. To heal a feeling, the feeling needs to feel a loving acceptance of you. So it's like you and your feelings. Now, the you needs to get more trained into this loving presence rather than feeling needs any training to be themselves. However, and this is what we're going to do today, we're also going to learn what the feelings need for themselves to be what they really are and to show us the gift and even as it says right use of will how do how can feelings enhance the quality of our life this resurrection of feelings that takes a little while to get used to and change our mind about them by really learning how to stay present for them how to accept them how to apologize them for the previous attacks so they can resurrect, how to dislodge judgments against them. Okay? Can you see those are all actions of the mind. When mind gets trained, your feelings begin to flow. There's a danger in the mind that mind begins to overtrain itself. Also, mind can play this trick on us and make up feelings that are not really there. So you get triggered a little bit and you go, ah, that must be the feeling. And you begin to deal with that trigger instead of going, what's underneath that trigger and how does it make me feel? So we go with the first thing or maybe the second, which is more emotional. But we need to get down to the very bottom where we feel only one feeling. When you feel this one feeling, you will actually stop thinking. Because the right use of feeling will definitely quieten your mind. Feelings have an incredible power to give us this peace we are looking for. However, without feeling, you can medicate yourself by meditation or by techniques to quieten your mind. But the best one is to like, how am I really feeling? Even that question requires that you make a space for an answer. What you don't want to get is the answer from your mind. You want to get the answer from your feeling self, from the feminine, yeah? So you go, how am I really feeling? And you just stop and you wait. Now, that's a good meditation. You sit there, it's like, what's the real feeling? And what you will begin to feel, you begin to feel vibration. You will feel this, uh, a breeze, like flow within you. Now we're talking feelings. As soon as these feelings are allowed, the mind will just feel like a warm, cozy blanket and gives mind a bit of a break from its endless tasks of figuring life. As soon as we have a real feelings, we immediately begin to give birth to our real heart as well. So we not only become quiet and peaceful, we begin to feel that a love is being born within us. This can be quite an intense feeling. So we need to learn how to stay present with it and don't disrupt it. Don't 
go into your phone or go into your chores or go into your food. You just simply sit and allow this birth to occur. If you can learn how to step back and allow this to happen, so you're not just sitting in some kind of like meditation that you go like, okay, I'm going to meditate for 30 minutes and you just sit and you close your eyes. That's all right. But why not ignite the part of you that is the feeling that will quieten your mind and you stop figuring things out and suddenly the answers to all your questions will begin to come from a different place than your mind. It begins to come from your whole mind and this is the state that we want to train ourselves to live from. So we begin to create. Once this is established, the next thing would be to look at what is it that we would love to have. What would you like to create in your life? Because feeling is the mother of everything. She will birth it. Whatever you put into her, she will birth it for you. Yeah? But give her judgments. You will be surrounded by judgmental people. Give them some form of attack. You will be attacked. So whatever you place into these feelings, this is what your outer reality is going to be magnetized to. It's like the true forgiveness happens when you no longer have anything to forgive. While some realities are still occurring in your life, particularly the undesirable ones, means you haven't forgiven, you still have something within you that's magnetizing this kind of reality to you. So you use whatever triggers you. Don't stay on a trigger level, but go, how am I really feeling about this? Go into that quiet place so you can hear from your feelings. So you go into receptivity. Your mind is now listening with a different ear. And that ear is that one that hears feelings. It's a different ear. It's the middle ear. I'm just kidding. It's just that part of you that has to be born out of this shift into new way of being. This is called the at one moment, and you become one with your whole self. So this little mind that keeps thinking begins to vanish. It's actually not the real part of you. So you train it enough to become receptive. That will open up the feeling realm. Feeling realm will ignite the heart. These two will ignite a new way of thinking, which we call vision. We see without these eyes. You can even close your eyes and still see everything around you. This comes with the slowing down and opening. And after this happens, you will feel that your body feels different. It will come to a place you have a feeling your body is not what it used to be. You realize that there is more to you than just this physical realm. But you will also physically feel it, slash, see it. So suddenly there will be things around you and you'll go like, wow, I can really feel what's going on. But this is the problem with the empaths, right? Empath is a person who can feel everything. But they like this, this vacuum cleaner. They just come and vacuum everything that's around them. But they don't know what to do with the rubbish. And usually choke on a enormity of feeling. This is what I'm going to talk about today. How to actually not do that. Yeah, You actually don't want to go and pick up the whole town. You just want to have this aura around you that... 
you are the queen or you are the king of your existence and not a sucker of all the emotions and, and denied feelings that are in your vicinity. So you learn how to protect yourself just by your presence. You just have things the way you want them to be. So here comes the main question. How do you want it? How do you want your life to be? Because we often focus how we don't want our life to be. It's like, oh, I don't want this to happen. Oh, no, I don't want that to happen. I don't want this to happen. Guess what you're focusing on? Guess what you're putting into your will, into your feelings? Guess what you're going to see the next day? Mm -hmm. Now that muscle of looking at what we don't want is quite good, strong. Mm -hmm. But that one which creates how exactly do you want your life to be? You need to only ask yourself that question. Um, is that muscle really strong? Am I brilliant at knowing exactly how I want my life to be? and then go on about it. Because we are all different, we all have slightly different gifts in us. And for us to find this gift is like a, a purpose in life. And the mission is to then share those gifts and give them so we actually have them. Like I said before, in truth, giving and receiving is very different like in this world. Yeah, In this world you give something to somebody and now you don't have it. Whereas if you give a feeling, if you learn how to share your true feeling, you not only give it, but you increase its value in you by the act of giving it away. Hence the sun. You know, sun just shines, and more it shines, more it shines. So it's called the sun of God and sun in the sky. It's the same sounding word. Why is that? Because it's a metaphor of radiance. So you are either radiant or not. If you're not radiant, then you are probably could be a pulling in a person. When you start pulling in, you will draw to yourself all sorts of things you might not necessarily desire. So you want to become the radiant, so that actually pushes out all undesirable things. You become like at this aura of who am I? And you just go your way and everything adjusts around you. And that's the power of the feminine principle. Yeah? If it's used correctly, it will birth for us a reality that we desire wholeheartedly how to. Because it's got to be practical. We can talk about things and we know so many tools. But do we use them? But this is one tool that is undeniably <laughs> one of the best things that's available. Because you already have this will in you, the will of God, the inheritance. But you might have not found out what it is, and you might have not given it. And in that way, you deprive yourself of everything. Hmm? The kingdom of heaven won't be found unless it is given. So, you simply relax. Relax more feel more, allow yourself to feel more so your mind goes quieter. It's like, how am I feeling right now? What's arising? To make it even deeper, make, imagine you somewhere in you is a well. Well where feeling is coming from. Right now birthing itself. If we're busy thinking, we don't see our source. <laughs> then we look for God somewhere else. But this is really your source of life. It's right there in you. It just needs quietness, 
but not just to sit, but be aware of the feeling self that will lead you to your own source, your source of life. So slow down, allow yourself to feel more and you become receptive. And in this quiet place, you ask yourself, what do I really want? What do I desire? And then relax. You don't want to start digging and looking around in your mind for all the things you think you want. But you wanted for it to come to you as a brand new thing. That's already part of the creating the new, being inspired to a, a new thought, maybe a thought that wasn't there before. So like, above all else, what do I really truly desire? And you wait. When it comes, It will either make you feel like, oh, you will have this like a relief, or you will smile. And uh, when I do this with people, or my friends and clients, I see a definite shift in their facial expression. They virtually shape shift into usually 20 years younger energy. Eh? the energy of newness and inspiration. It's like looking at a little baby, you know. Just look at it in the innocence of it and then in the empty-mindedness and just pure radiance, yeah. It's many times overwhelmingly beautiful. This is exactly the same. This is actually what Jesus calls in in uh, Course of Miracles the face of Christ. Huh? You begin to see it um, eventually, you start continue doing this, you'll see it in everyone, even when they are not doing it. Because you doing it, you seeing and you creating a new world where everybody wears a face of Christ. Yeah? If you're looking for people who are not that, you will find them. Um, Many times in certain religions, people look for the sinners. Oh, well, guess what? They get really successful at it. Why? Well, because that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for God. They're looking for the bad guys. So they feel like the good guys and they have the bad guys. But can you see how that would not work ever if you understood the principle of creation? Yeah. There's no one needs to be convinced of anything. Yeah. God is within you and is there now. And if you're locked up in your mind, you can't be aware of God. However, when you step back and just allow God to introduce yourself, you'll be right there. But you must have your feelings moving, your heart opening change of mind, which is like, you cannot not change your mind when this beautiful, radiant feeling self returns to you, mm -hmm. which will elevate your body. In that you will recognize and feel your own wholeness and you remember God. However, just before that, whenever you look at somebody, you will see this face of Christ. So, when you get that moment of inspiration and go like, oh, this is what I want. Hmm. Now, in this world, we have time and sequence and space and time, yeah? In truth, there isn't such thing. If you have an inspiration, your expression to it is instantaneous. There's no separation between the two. Idea and the manifestation already happens in you, but if your feeling body is 
crucified or denied, you don't have that experience of manifesting right now. So things begin to happen very slowly and one day in the future. However, if you allow yourself to feel what it would be like to have this already be happening, like if, if that idea you just had was happening now, you begin to feel it. Hmm? What you will see, you will suddenly have this intense, blissful feeling coming through you. Why is that? Because that treasure is already in you. And you don't have to go out into the world and work hard to get it. You can have it now. Because even at the end of it, when you work hard to get it, you will still just feel what it makes you feel like when you have it. So why waste time and space and search and effort if you can have everything right now? And what I mean by everything it's like you don't need to actually have a car standing in front of you. Because that car is going to give you a feeling when you have it. Same feeling as you have right now. If you can't allow yourself to feel that feeling, you're not going to be able to allow yourself to have that feeling when you get that car. Either. Or it will be just a momentary joy and until someone scratches it or you know until something goes wrong which in this physical universe does but in your inner sanctum in, in your inner birthplace of the new yeah because that's the subtitle of this talk is the creation of the new how can you create yourself a world that you want hmm? how do i want it that's question one. And if I already had that, which is a, um, which just occurred in my mind, how would that make me feel? Your feelings will rush in to fulfill it. The minute you begin to feel it, this can happen that it becomes so intensely beautiful that you will almost not be able to handle the bliss and the the ecstasy of it. It's important to learn how to step back from that experience. Let the feeling open up the other way so it's like birthing out of you. So we look at the picture of a woman birthing. She's birthing it out of her. She's not birthing it in. She's birthing it out. So equally <laughs> like pull your legs apart a little bit and just allow that imagine you're on top of the mountain and you're just letting like an avalanche of this feeling to be born into the existence because these feelings are going to be big when you do this without effort it will be huge And there's a Czech writer, Kundera, who, who wrote this unbearable lightness of being. And I love that title because that's exactly what it feels like. You begin to create, and in this physical reality, the way we constructed our bodies, while they were run by these brains, right? that's why they're so dense, you will feel that this birth of the new is quite intense on you and you will need to have a take a little break from it. Like I just did five days of it. It was just like relaxing, creating, and then there was so much ecstasy and so much feeling good. I was seriously like on drugs. I said, I'm just going to give myself a normal human day today. <laughs> just like, let's have a break from this. So it can be quite strong, but as I said at the beginning, big feelings, 
They need space. What do they need? Space. So our bodies became so dense because the way we live. Hmm? We have dense thoughts, we have dense reality, everything's very slow here, or extremely fast. But that's like a false fastness. It's more like a static. Just everything's going crazy. It's not coming from creation. It's coming from tension and stress. And that makes our bodies dense. That When our bodies are dense, we see our reality as dense. We see everything as we see ourselves. So to learn how to feel something in this very dense body or reality, we need to learn how to step back. So you virtually just take like a two steps back to where the feeling is going and you let it, you open a space for it to birth out. So you're not denying it, you're not pushing it away. You're just getting into space for it to birth the way it needs to birth. You see the trick there? So if you have these overwhelming feelings, it means you are trying to birth them inside of you, inside a de dense body. Hmm? Because of this density, even a birth is like a intense, painful experience. Why? Well, well, because we created ourselves too dense. It's not meant to be like that. So we need to learn how to step back and as if open a space in front of us. And the more you manage to open this space, obviously just like a mental decision to open a space, just the willingness to open it. Huh? It begins to happen and then you will see these amazing feelings pouring out as if in front of you and flooding the whole area where you are. So I suddenly feel the room is full of feeling and everything who's around you feels you just as you feel because your extension of feeling reaches their extension of feeling and the vibrationally you begin to co-sound together. You begin to vibrate on a very similar frequency. I said before in my men's group we do this check-in at the beginning and men just make sound and as soon as a man makes a sound we all go like yep I got you I can feel your day I can feel where you're at then he says a couple of words and then we clear he's done instead of this endless laborious explanations of details of what's happening in his karma drama. So this is the whole mechanism, hey? Very simple. Relax, you can even lie down and just go almost like in a dream state. You can do it sitting, you can do it semi-lying down. Just find comfort. None of this straight spine and that just makes you more rigid. Huh? Um, this is exactly how you don't get it. Yeah, Just chill, <laughs> my, my little steppy used to say. Cole, just chill your grill, <laughs> you know. Just chill out, step back, let the creation show you what it has in store for you. So, Feminine needs a lot of space. It, it needs to. It needs a lot of opening because it wants to open. It wants to open to receive. Hmm? Without opening, everything is a kind of like a pressure, or even um, how would I put this? Like the masculine always has this idea of 
opening something, penetrating it, going in, right? And if the feminine is not open and he almost like tries to force it, particularly if he's uneducated in this area, he will force himself and you will feel like you are being invaded. Same can happen, for example, often people say, well, go into your feelings. Well, your feelings don't necessarily want your mind in there. Because hmm? feelings is a different quality to thinking. And if your thinking is not pure, your feelings <laughs> don't want to have anything to do with it. Actually, it could be repulsive to them, even in yourself. So to learn how to open up the space to invite the masculine, yeah, because it feels good, is a real art. Women often ask me, hey Cole, you know, you're training all these men, it's like, where are they? <laughs> where are all the men? And I said, no, no, darling, where, where are all the women? Because in, women are very much now, at this point of evolution, very much in their mind. And so what does that does? It ignites more of the masculine quality. And then what that does it makes man to go and relax and open. So the area where I live, there's this man, they're just radiating, they're just walking around, they're virtually like, hello, how are you? And I meet women and they're like, hey, and go like, I'm on a mission, <laughs> I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and I'm, I'm so organized, and I've that and that, and I'm like, that's exactly the masculine quality. So, to learn how to return into the pure feelings is returning away from our mind into the feeling. That will help the man to become more present because there will be something to be present for. Man has a lot on his mind. Now, if you come and start using your mind to add to it. Here it goes, like a red light comes on, and it goes like, whew, this is too much. Hmm? However, he's got so many thoughts, and then you come with this feeling, and that feeling, what does it do? Stops the mind. Now, the mind stops, and he becomes what? Present. That's the real gift. You can get man to become present, not by telling him to become present, but by inviting him to be present by allowing more feeling in yourself. Let's say you have a man in your life who's soft in some way. You would like him to be more masculine, but he's not getting masculine. And you start talking to him, it's like, hey, you gotta like get your act together and know what you want and what are you doing right now? You're directing the masculine. What does that make you? Director. <laughs> You're in charge, right? And then you're wondering, why isn't he taking care of you? Because you took that role and you're taking care of him. That makes him more feminine. So instead, Bring in the feeling and imagine you can't talk anymore. Yeah? And I'm not saying, hey, I'm taking away your words. No, no, no. I'm just saying, if you have this imbalance in the relationship, see if you can come with your genuine, now birthed feelings to soothe his or virtually turn off his mind and become more present. So let's run over these steps again. So put yourself in a very relaxed state. Go deep. 
slow down your mind by feeling more and feeling more. And somewhere in this place you ask yourself, what do I truly desire? And you don't really want to go and search your mind for it. Because you, wanna, you don't want to dig out something old that you already had before. You want to wait for a brand new idea. What is that you really want? And you simply step back and you just wait. And you just relax, relax, as if you were waiting for the God in you to show you something that's in store for you that you might have not looked into yet. Because it's there already. It's not like you're looking for something that um, is outside you. It's all within. Every single idea of this world is where? It's in our mind, in our heart, and in our feeling self. So, once the idea comes in, you go, if I already had this, what would be the feeling of it? Mm -hmm. And then you just again relax, don't try to work on this. Just simply hang in there and wait for the feeling to come. It will come by itself. Because feelings love to come to an inspired mind. Yeah? When there is negativity, they, they feel there is a pressure of some kind because we try to get rid of it. But when there is an inspiring idea, we go, Oh! And in that inspiration, your feelings want to go and embrace it. Right? Fulfill it. Create it. Normally, we just don't give it space, these feelings, to, to do so. Mm -hmm. So now you're feeling that feeling, and in my, in some cases it might be very strong, in some cases it might be only a little bit. So just allow yourself to have it a little bit more, or even a little bit less if it's too much. So we can find like a sweet spot of creating the new. And then... Once you begin to feel it, it will smile, it will make you happy, it will make you childlike. You go into sharing it out of you. Mm -hmm. You open the space around you. Not all of this has to happen right inside you as if, or like right inside where your body appears to be. You can space it out a little bit and share it share it outward so that means you're giving the gift and as you're giving it you're receiving it back you have it this is the beauty of creation that whatever you truly give from your heart comes to you tenfold if not more hundredfold yeah and so that's the whole thing and then you just go enjoy that and then is there anything else I desire you just step back, relax, no effort at all, just chilling, resting, doing absolutely nothing, if that's possible. And then the inquiry is already put in there, yeah? What do I really desire? What do I really want, right? And sometimes it comes as, I just want to feel good. Or I just want to be happy. And so if you were happy, what would that feel like? <laughs> and because you're having a happy thought, you know, you get these happy feelings come around you. And suddenly you begin to feel happy. And you let that flow. And another thing is that you stay there. Like stay in this place of like, oh, you mean happy? He <laughs> says, yeah, just happy. For no good reason except that you allowing yourself to feel the feelings of happiness that are naturally in you as a part of your existence or uh, we could say the gift of God is, you know, peace, joy, love, 
yeah? All these basic feelings are all we really need. And if you keep doing this for a while, you begin to have a feeling of fulfillment. Because you fulfilling your destiny path, which is basically just to be happy, oh, to feel good. We go such a long way to do so, so many things just to feel good. And yet, we don't just sit here and go, okay, I'm just gonna allow my feelings, <laughs> my what? My feelings to fulfill me with just a feeling of feeling good. See how simple that is? And once you feel good, you just continue feeling good without grabbing for something that's gonna disturb you from this and maybe give you completely different and maybe even undesirable feeling. So just resting and you're manifesting. <laughs> oh yeah, my mind. Oh. Oh, so cute. <laughs> so, there we go. That's how you do it. See, it just makes me happy, makes me gooey. Makes me go like, oh my God. And it unplugs my kundalini energy. You know, people do so much stretching and yoga and I don't know what, posturing and breathing and meditating just to feel this kundalini. It's just actually when you allow yourself to feel good, those feelings will begin to flow upwards. You know, it's like when you open a champagne to celebrate it and then you look into the bottle and there's still these little bubbles going up. Not like fast, just gently to get take take a flow. It's the same. You begin to constantly have this gentle, bubbly like feeling of feelings. Yeah? Now, if you want more, you give more. So to everyone I offer this feeling of goodness or feeling of joy, feeling of peace, and you offer it and you simply don't let the mind distract you. Don't let your thoughts creep in and go like, well, what about this? <laughs> you know, you just don't do that. You just go like, not now, I'm practicing something that would normally take me a long time to get to. So, like this, and this is a real secret to to everything. Because you could save yourself a lot of time chasing things that are not necessarily going to make you happy. And if they do, your feelings will be distracted by the mind and it will take away from you that experience. So asking for something as simple as feeling good is a very big ask. Because imagine your life. You wake up in the morning, you feel good. Not ecstatic, yeah, just feeling good. But by 10 o'clock in the morning, you're still feeling good. When it comes afternoon, you feel good. And it comes in the evening, you're still feeling good. And then you go to sleep, feeling good. Now, what do you think or feel or see that you have just projected into future? Hmm? You wake up the next day and you feel good. And you know what? When you feel good, you don't do a lot of things than you normally do when you don't feel good. Right? So it's a big ask. But it's a profound ask. It's for simple things in life. Mm -hmm. I try this so, so many times and then uh, <laughs> I 
begin to experience ecstasy and um, that really shifted my perception on <clears throat> nirvana because I always thought it was a bit of a, like a carrot you know like hey chase that chase that chase that and it was always just in front of you but never really yours and suddenly day in day out there's this from feeling good comes a feeling of, of ecstasy and incredible fulfillment huh is that simple it's just simply fulfill yourself but it does need a little practice and it dedication and until it kicks in in such a way you don't even think about it so just wanted to enhance that practice and um, just let me know how you went leave me a comment saying hey Cole that's just doesn't work for me or something I'll say wow thank you <laughs> I'm enlightened now yeah because you'll be so full of light mm? you because if when you feel delightful when you feel content you are full of light this light is not just something like only few chosen ones have this is your your natural inheritance your real presence will come when your real presence come, more feelings will come because there is something to open to. I bet women you know this thing where you come all open and ready and there's no one there. It's the most painful experience for the feminine. But let's say you all open and there he is like, hello, here I am. Like this exquisite silent presence that's holding, embracing lovingly. He's like ignited man. His full erection of his body. Yeah, He's just not standing there like a limp. But hey, hello, here I am. Yeah, Your feminine begins to want to open to it and dance to it virtually. This is these days almost like an unknown reality. So the feminine principle helps women to return to being real women by allowing more feeling, allowing more feeling, less mind. More feeling opens the heart, heart brings out more love, and then that helps the masculine to put himself together. Equally, men have a lot to do in order to retrain themselves to be men again. Right? There are men who are really on their mission, but they never have time for their feelings, they never have time for you, and they never have time for anything except that mission. That's, that's not right either. Hmm? So, and usually they become very mental and disconnected from themselves. So there could be a man who is really masculine, but is not heart, is not attractive either. You want to have a perfect balance. He feels his feelings, but he's not burdened by them. He's present for them. Whatever comes up for him, he stays present for it. It's like, oh yeah, wow, intense feeling. Here I am. He doesn't collapse in his body, he just stays there, go like, wow, this is intense. But it's all right, you see. When he can stay, the feeling will relax and will surrender to the holding. So it becomes beautiful, it becomes a union. So now, instead of birthing the heart between your own mind and your own feelings, you begin to birth the heart between two of you. He's present. That opens you. When he opens you, you bring in the negative charge. He brings the positive charge, and you begin to unite. Suddenly comes this amazing inner communication, what I call a communion. 
And this is a true communion with God. Because you are fully united with yourself. And then when two who are united in themselves meet together, they will birth the heart between them. And that will create a relationship. That creates a beautiful relationship where you both feel fulfilled just by being in that quality of presence. So everyone wins, you know. It's not like one is overpowering the other and <clears throat> the other feel controlled by the other. No, it's a perfect balance, it's a perfect harmony because we entered the electromagnetic field, the perfect design, yeah, in which we can increase polarity to a point where the two magnets click into oneness. And that is a genuine oneness and a genuine enlightenment as well. Because there are schools that just keep opening the mind, keep opening the mind and there's a lot of light upstairs. But there's nobody downstairs. And so to maintain that kind of light is effort, a lot of focus, and yet it's hardly ever a loving presence. It could look very enlightened, it could look, but it's a white light. It just does not have colors, it doesn't have the dance and a, and a joy, like a real genuine joy comes from feeling at the same time. Feelings bring life, colors, and movement into life. Just to be still, and be still, and be still, and be still. It's not, there's no creation. Right? Many guys who pretend to be the enlightened dudes are just awakened in this upper self. And they say, yeah, yeah, feeling is just fine. <laughs> no, 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 it's not just fine. Feeling is the secret. Feeling is everything. Eventually we realize that feeling is all there is. But that we will take up in the next episode. So we'll see you in a short while.